six spectacular rounds of the 2011 season are in the rearview mirror. It is here, from the land of 10,000 lakes, that the push for a championship must begin. Round seven of the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship is set to start right now, live on Fuel TV. The second half of the 2011 Lucas Oil AMA Pro Moto Cross Championship is about to get underway from Spring Creek Raceway in Millville, Minnesota. It's the Spring Creek Motocross National. Hello, everyone. Jason Wygant, of course, joined by four-time AMA National Champion Jeff Emig here at Millville, Minnesota, a track that a lot of people are excited about racing on, and we're excited to bring you the coverage of it. Let's give you the big-picture storylines of the 450 class that will be coming up in just a moment. Trey Kennard is back in action. Last year's 250 class national champion had a broken leg, missed the first half of this 450 tour. He will make his debut outdoors on a big bike today. And speaking of returning, Ryan Dungey is back home. He is a Minnesota native, and he has won on this track for the last three years. Can he make it four in a row? And in qualifying, a big surprise, Kennard, in his first ever outdoor race on a 450, was the fastest of anyone on a 450. So certainly the number 41 could be a championship spoiler today and throughout the rest of this championship season. So, Jeff, let's talk a little bit about racing here at Spring Creek. It's a track that a lot of riders say is one of their favorites oh, yeah. on the tour, oh, yeah. but it's also a track that's absorbed a whole lot of rain over the last couple of days. Yeah, and it's the soil that we have here. It's the sandy clay. Uh, so much rain came down uh, over the last week, but it just seemed to just run off. Uh, the race course was pretty wet and sloppy earlier today in uh, the qualifying practices, and it was questionable whether or not, you know, how raceable it would be. Um, right away, you notice that the track, it was okay. Now the sun has started to come out, uh, humidity levels going up, the temperature is going to go up, and the track is going to be unbelievable come race time. All right, well, it's going to be exciting to go racing, and we're about to do that, but first, let's send it down to Aaron Bates on the starting line. Six rounds down and six to go. These guys have had a weekend off. They're fresh, they're rejuvenated, and they've had some time to let their injuries heal. But one guy making his 450 debut, the first of the season, Trey Kennard, you're back. Are you as comfortable as you look being the fastest of qualifying overall today, lining up? I feel really good. You know, I'm, I'm thankful to be here, and that's uh, that's refreshing, you know, to be here and, and to just really want to be here. I'm, I'm very thankful for that. and. I'm uh, really looking forward to the race. You know, practice went well, but, um, you know, I know that's just one lap, and hopefully we can do uh, a lot more good ones this, this race. Great to see you back, Trey. And Ryan Dungey lined up on the start gate. Ryan, you were the first guy sitting here ready. You're the Minnesota native, a lot of family, a lot of friends, a lot of support. Is this pressure, or is this just excitement for you? Uh, exciting. You know, I grew up here my whole life, and I uh, really had a blast, a lot of memories, a lot of good times, and uh, family, friends, and, and uh, the, the crowd's great, you know, great people, and uh, it's just really good to be back. I always love it. It's a great track uh, every, with everything else, and uh, it's, I love love riding here, and it's enjoyable, and uh, to see everybody else, it's, it's an added bonus. Conditions have been changing all day long. Ryan Villapoto is sitting on the gate waiting to get going here. Ryan, take us through you're one guy that took no time off during that weekend break you just kept training harder and harder what do you expect to happen here today ah uh, you know just uh, it's another race we'll just get uh, you know get a good start and uh, put in two solid motos today um, goal is to make up points and uh, like I said just have a have a solid two motos well, we ended the first half of this 2011 tour with a spectacular event at Redbud. A huge crowd turned out on one of the most fun race motocross, mo motocross tracks to race you'll ever find. And we're going to follow it up with another one of the fun tracks today at Millville, and we expect the same type of great racing action. On the last lap for the first 450 moto from Redbud, Michigan privateer Josh Lichtel suffered a seizure on the track. He was quickly taken to a nearby hospital where he passed away 36 hours later. Josh was living out a childhood dream, racing with the world's best at a track he loved. Today, we remember Josh Lichtel. He was 23 years old. Welcome back to Spring Creek, Millville, Minnesota. Fuel TV's live coverage of the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Moto Cross Championship. Let's give you the 411 and show you exactly how we're going to go racing today. 450 bikes up next. We'll have two motos in this class, 40 riders in each, and each race lasts 30 minutes and two laps. We combine both races' scores to determine an overall winner for the day. So that's the format. Let's show you the track map brought to you by Kawasaki and the 2012 KX450F. 
fully equipped and race ready. Jeff Emick, talk about Bill Bill. Dan, the proof is all around you that Mother Nature cannot stop AMA Motocross here at Spring <laughs> Creek. You come down through the sand whoop section. The whoop monster's not around this year. What? Where is he at? So you come back up in uh, into the hill section. Huge uphill triples and tabletops. This uphill, downhill, back downhill section is so steep. When you walk it, it's unbelievable. Uh, you get into a few of the tighter sections. There's going to be some inside ruts there that are going to be a little bit uh, deep for the guys, especially here uh, on the uh, first race. But all in all, this track is fantastic right now. Well, you mentioned first race. It is the first race for the number 41 of Trey Kennard. He has the old guy, so to speak, Kevin Windham, next to him with the reverse of the numbers on his factory Honda. So good to see these guys back in action. Let's get to know Trey Kennard. My injury happened uh, about three months ago. We were testing uh, for motocross during uh, one of the supercross breaks, and uh, it was just kind of one of those misfortunate deals, just uh, one small mistake that, that uh, led into a pretty decent injury. And, and uh, you know, it was a, a big bummer for myself to have to sit out the rest of the Supercross series. But, you know, I think that, uh, you know, just the, the important thing is just to, to take positives from it and, and uh, try to get better as a person and ride it. You know, at this point in, in my preparation, that this is the next step to me in getting better. You know, I think I've reached a little bit of a point where it's hard to, to keep going forward. And I think that, uh, we're ready to go racing, and, and I think that that'll be my next step in, in getting better. I think this is a good time for me. There'll be two races and then a break, which will be really good for me. And uh, you know, we're just going to go there and do our best. And, and uh, when we draw, it'll be uh, a good experience. You know, I think my outlook on racing has never changed. I've always wanted to win races, and I've always wanted to be uh, one of those top guys. And the most, I've just wanted to enjoy racing. And, and uh, I think whenever you're you're competing well and you're happy with how you're performing, then that's when you're having fun. So, you know, I think that uh, my view is always the same, but, uh, you know, winning a championship is just, you know, obviously the goal. Good to have one of the young guns in action with Trey Kennard. And meanwhile, on the opposite end, Jeff Emick's feeling young today because John Dowd at age 45 <laughs> is returning to the tour once again to try to defend his national number 16. He's got to score a couple of points today. You battled with this guy a lot in your day. Oh, yeah, and at this, at this race, we crossed the finish line. I won by about a foot to really? win the, literally <laughs> one foot 12 inches nice. to win the overall. But uh, we had some great races and a nice wet, muddy day like this, sandy soil. Could be Dowd's day, top 10 possibly. That's true. So we got to watch the 16 of Dowd back in action, the 41 of Kennard. We mentioned that Kevin Windham on the 14, who we thought would only race the first couple rounds of the tour. He confirmed it last week. He's racing the whole thing. So lots of big names. Let's go racing in the 450 class. The mud breaking. Definitely. Yeah, breaking. almost goes down. And that's Nick Way, I think, who is down on the 27. So he is dead last. And Carnage beyond that. And it's Chad Reed out front, series points leader, picking up where he left off. Led the series to the first six rounds and is leading here. But look who's right behind him, the hometown favorite, Ryan Dungey. Ryan Dungey, he's turned a lot of laps on this track, but uh, he, he's been good here. Won the last three years. A couple of 250 wins, won the 450 last year. But the competition this year is so tough. It's so tight between the top three in points. And now you throw in third place right here, Trey Kennard, yeah. 41, who was your fastest qualifier, like we mentioned earlier. So he's going to be right in the mix of this. And as far as the championship goes, Kennard could be the spoiler here. How many times have we seen Reed and Dungey hook up like this this year? I counted, I think, five great battles like this through our first 12 motos. So basically half of the time we've gone racing, we've seen the 22 and the one hook it up. It's happening again. It's a tough section, Jeff. Yeah, watch this uphill double. There were parts of qualifying practice where they couldn't even make that double. And you see how bad the ruts get. And then they come back down. And there's a huge braking bump. There was landing right here. And they actually fixed the track with the bulldozers to smooth that out. Because uh, when you would land off this drop off, I mean, it was like two feet deep. Think that bump will be back? Oh, it'll, it'll be back. Rest. OK. It's been here every year. So. <laughs> right. Uh, there's Dungey second, Kennard hanging right with them in third, Mike Alessi fourth, 
Brett Metcalf is fifth, and that is Weimer on the Kawasaki behind him. Then it's Filippoto. So as expected, most of the big players are up front early. That has been the case. It's Filippoto in front of Weimer now. But uh, for the most part this year, we've seen the superstars get out front together, and that's the case again here at Millville. A lot of the top guys and points are right up there. You got Medcalf with a pretty good start right here, and you see everyone's kind of single filed a little bit. That's because there's so much roost coming up off the bikes, and the tendency for the track, how it develops in qualifying practice, especially on a day like today, where they have two rounds of practice. So when the track was wet and slippery, everyone's trying to fight as that one line gets kind of grooved in, mm -hmm. okay? The last round of practice, they're trying to set that last time to get seated into the heat races here, I mean, into the main events. Um, so the track's gonna be a little bit one line at this point, but now that they're racing, mm -hmm. riders are gonna be forced to go outside of that main line uh, to find a place to pass, or as that main line gets rough and nasty, you find a smoother line somewhere else. Villapoto, they have dropped a Weimer. You see the distance between the two Kawasaki riders, and he is trying to go after Metcalf, but Villapoto lost some ground in the whoops. Well, yeah, as you get through those sand whoops, they're just so wet and sloppy this year. Now, uh, typically you can get on top and kind of skim across the top with a lot of speed, but the bikes are just going back and forth. When both tires hit, rear wheel doesn't want to stay in line with the front. We noticed today uh, in qualifying practice that it was really you know, bikes were twitchy for everyone. Right. Things are going to be a little bit easier now for the riders as the track gets grouped in. And we have Wyndham rolling up on Weimer next in the order. And uh, these are the type of conditions Kevin Wyndham usually does well in here in the mud. Looks like Jimmy Albertson yeah. rounding out the top ten. And this is Ty Simmons. Simmons, yeah. On the uh, JDR Racing uh, KTM. They've got some support from the factory squad. Not the full factory effort like Alessi has a little bit further up. And the full factory KTM is right behind him. That's Andrew Short. Yeah, and that, the JDR KTM is backed by J-Star Motors, but they're they're actually an Australian team that yes. has had a lot of success down under and decided, hey, look, we want to go race in America where the best guys are. So we're going to not only, we're not going to stop what we're doing there, we're just going to add another team here. And they brought on Nathan Ramsey to be the, uh, you know, the um, uh, manager and rider coach for that team. And uh, they've had some pretty good results um, for uh, just a young team. Yeah, Simmons, a young 18-year-old out of Australia. Let's go back to this battle. Metcalf on the yellow and the green of Villapoto. And uh, Metcalf Terrible talked to him time. a couple days ago. Yeah, uh, did a lot of changes to the bike through the first six rounds of the tour. Said just a few more refinements between round six and this one. He's feeling a lot better, but he's going to need to feel as good as he can because Villapoto is bringing the pressure right now. Well, look at the intensity. Villapoto just was in that crouching position I I, I kind of to me it kind of looks like a cobra at times where he's just oh look right there see how when he buries it down yeah. in there and that wet sandy stuff it just makes it real sloppy hard to stay in line and keep your drive across the top which is what they want to do but Villapoto he's really putting out the extreme effort now he'll know that oh now Metcalf wow. is the one that has the problem but Villapoto is going to be stuck on the outside of this corner and still can't make the pass I can't even make my point how the quickly this is yes. yes. it's changing fast. The front number plate of Villapoto's bike totally covered with that wet sand. Look at this battle up front. Dungy is not going anywhere. Kennard is not going anywhere. They're right there with Reed. This is what we were hoping to see. Another rider to get up in the mix. And Kennard has instantly responded to that challenge. He's looking to make a pass. Well, and the interesting thing about Reed is I, I felt that this break was going to be good for him. He took a vacation with his family. And I'm interested to see if he comes back fired up. Now, I know he's got the start. He's out there getting the lines right now. But typically, the first motos, if he's got out front, you think, OK, he's going to run away with this because at the last race, he won the second moto, right? Right. And the first motos have not really gone his way. And then he's when it's time to step it back up, he has for the second moto. Mm -hmm. I think he won the first uh, five second motos, second motos yeah, right. of, the, of the year. And so right now, I think it's important for him, especially with the lead. Uh, this is this is going to be a big moment for both of these two leaders here to see who's got it here in in the second half. I feel that Reed, especially with the start here, yeah. if, if he doesn't win this moto, there's there's uh, you know there's going to be some problems. Well, on the flip side, you have Dungey who uh, lamented that he has had trouble this year making the quick passes. He's gotten stuck behind Reed a bunch of times, got roosted and then fell into the wrong lines, fell into the wrong pace. And he said uh, his, his goal 
in the second half is to be more aggressive and, and attack quickly. Not able to do it so far. And we see Kennard has dropped out of this battle just a bit. He had a, a mistake and he's lost some ground. So we're back to the 22 and the one all alone. Yeah, and your point about Dungey is that because uh, he's had a couple of DNFs this year, one in Supercross, one here in Motocross, and it's setting Alessi back a Alessi has actually bit. gotten past Kennard here. Sorry to interrupt, Jeff, but that mistake, really costly. So now Alessi to third, Kennard back to fourth, and that Metcalf and Villapoto battle is right there with them. Yeah, what a good ride for Alessi here. Yeah. Take a look at the lap times. Reed, Dungey, Kennard were all in the 207s. Alessi, Metcalf, Villapoto, uh, 208s. Actually, Villapoto was a 209, so he dropped a little bit off the back of the pace there. Aaron, what are you hearing on Mike Alessi? Well, you guys, the whole KTM team, they've been working really hard this afternoon trying to get that bike dialed in perfectly, but they have done something that's helped him smooth his ride up. They've slowed the rebound down. He said this track is so rough and tough and choppy that being smooth and concise is going to be the key today. Yeah, so basically, if you can imagine, if you push down on the back of the bike, there's a, there's a spring and there is a shock that yep. has oil and dampening and all this stuff. So they slow down the rebound close up the dampening to where the, the seat and the, the rear fender would, you know, essentially if you push down on it with your hands, it would come up slower. Mm -hmm. And what that's doing, it would try to, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, control the back of the bike so it doesn't pop up so much over these jumps, possibly going into turns, and especially going down those downhills. This is a tremendous race here for third. You got Alessi, Kennard, Metcalf, and Villapoto. And uh, a lot of these guys, they got experience at this track. Kennard and Alessi made their pro debuts at this racetrack years and years ago. So if there are any lines to make passes, these riders know where they are. Look at Filippoto. He is trying everything. The fourth rider in this train. Oh, and Metcalf has gone down. So whatever line Metcalf found did not work. Yeah, he tried the outside there. Everyone had to go into the inside. You know, remember in practice, I was telling you, that big uh, bump coming yeah. up, up the face of that. So as the track is drying out, he's trying to find a new line, but looks like it was a little too sloppy out there for the Australian. Right, so now he's going to go to the back of that train. Reed continues to lead Dungey as Alessi holds off Kennard and Villapoto. And we got plenty of time for racing here in this moto. The plot thickens here, live on Fuel TV. Chad Reed and Ryan Dungey going at it for the number one spot here in Minnesota. And Jeff Emick, Chad Reed's leading. That's good, but he just lost his goggles. That's bad. Yeah, that is going to oh! oh, and Dungey off Woo! the track. How did he save that there? That, that wow. whoop section is really tough. You, know, you notice Dungey right there kind of collected himself. Looks like he's wearing roll-offs on his goggles. Chad Reed, on the other hand, for some reason, either he pulled too many tear-offs. See, look at Chad Reed right there. He makes a mistake, and Dungey says, okay, now's my chance, wow. and almost goes over the bars, and then as he hits the rear brakes, stuffs the front wheel down, almost goes over, over the bars forward and back. Wow, what an interesting sequence, but it's going to be difficult for Chad Reed with no goggles, uh, especially as they come into the lap riders. The only other real issue would be some of that sandy mud flying up off of the front tire, um, and, you, you know, if from the wind hitting you without goggles on, kind of makes your eyes water a little bit. So we'll keep an eye on that as uh, Chad tries to win this moto. Keep an eye on this battle for third. Alessi still holding Kennard at bay and Villapoto trying to make moves on them. They were battling with Brett Metcalf, but uh, then Metcalf went down. So Metcalf is back to sixth. Look at Kennard of the 41. They're just trying to find running room, but on this wet, sloppy track, have been able to make passes. Yeah, but the, the track's opening up a little bit. Uh -huh. I mean, the fact that, what, we got another yellow flag there for a downed rider. They're going to come around right now. Look at that section. Usually it's just a nice straight run up that hill, and the track builders added some whoops into that. And it totally, <laughs> as a rider, I'm like, those are totally unnecessary. This track is, is uh, as difficult standard as, as what it needs to be. So uh, just another level of, uh, you know, uh, difficulty that they've put into that uphill. Kennard used that same outside line headed toward the finish that caught Metcalf a few laps ago. He didn't go down, but he couldn't make the pass either. Unless he's one of the tougher guys to pass, he knows how to get starts and he knows how to hold people off. Now look, Alessi, he just pulled his roll-offs there over, over that tabletop, and he hasn't had anyone in front of him mm -hmm. for a couple of laps, right? So as long as Chad Reed can stay out front, he should be he should be all right. But, I mean, Alessi still pulled 
you know, a roll-off film across. Even without the, riders in front of him, yeah, imagine, his goggles are still getting covered. Yeah, imagine what uh, Trey Kennard and Villapoto are going through at this point. This week, see why Bruce Lee was considered the entertainer and how he changed the world. Don't miss the biggest names in sports and entertainment. Pay tribute to the master. Bruce Lee lives Wednesdays at 10 Eastern and Pacific on Fuel TV. Now, right now, Michael Essie, it's been a tug of war here between he and Kennard. Kennard gets really close. Kennard drops back a little bit. Is that a matter of Kennard making mistakes and bad lines, or is he backing down to not get all that sand in his face? Well, they're not backing down too much. Here comes Villapoto. Yeah, Sorry, Jeff. That, that definitely is one of, one of the factors. Uh, this is Trey's first race in AMA Motocross on a 450. It's his first race in a while after the injury. Ooh, a couple of riders in the pits. Christian Craig, who's been a consistent top 10 runner, is headed back to the pits on the 144. And that's uh, Futrell. Taylor was, Futrell, yeah. Yeah, was setting uh, in the mechanics area also. Looked for a moment that Villapoto had a line dialed in to try to get around Kennard, but instead now Kennard has closed back up on Alessi. This has been a great battle, but not what you want to have happen. Halfway mark for Villapoto and the men he's battling for the championship, Dungey and Reed are getting away. One thing that has happened, though, we, as you can see that the sun has came out, started mm -hmm. to brighten up a little bit. And that's going to help dra dry this track out. Uh-oh, looks like Kennard. That outside line's not working at all, and Villapoto takes advantage and goes by the 41. Now, you mentioned about a half a lap ago that this is Kennard's first race back. Is uh, fatigue or anything maybe becoming a factor that he's running the race pace? Well, he mentioned in that interview that uh, for he, he kind of felt that his progress had stopped. It was time to race, and racing is what was going to you know, increase his fitness and all that. So yeah, things probably happen a little bit quick for him right now because when you practice and you're testing, you're kind of on your own pace. Right now, these other riders are dictating the pace to him. Let's send it down to uh, Aaron. What's happening uh, trackside? Well, guys, don't expect Ryan Villapoto to back off anytime soon. In fact, his trainer, Alden Baker, informed me this afternoon that he stayed back in Florida and had two good weeks of training. And the one thing that they really worked on was consistency. Lap times and training was all he did during that week off. He is an animal right now. Well, he's trying to eat up some ground on Alessi and then the riders between him. What do you got, Jeff? Well, I'm telling you what, what good training would be, and that's a lot of positives, okay? Okay. When you get challenged, whether it's by lap times, things like that when, mm -hmm. you're, when you're testing, or whether your, your trainer is uh, challenging you on your bicycle rides or in the gym, and you rise to the occasion, and you, know, and you overcome those obstacles, and you start checking those things off the list, that breeds your confidence, okay? And he comes here uh, definitely fired up but having a little bit of trouble getting around these riders here. And it looked like a few laps ago that he was like, okay, I'm on it. I'm ready to pull the trigger. I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. But then he found that he's going to have to let the track break in a little bit more than what it is now uh, because he probably wasted a lot of energy, wasted a lot of tear-offs, things like that. All right. So the damage is done. You've got a 17-second gap between Reed, your leader, and Alessi, who is in third. We go back to Metcalf, who was in that battle with Kennard, Alessi, and Villapoto until he went down. So he is in sixth. And uh, Metcalf and Dungey were actually here, got to ride the track when it was dry on Thursday for press day. Uh, so anything they learned from there is probably thrown out the window. The track's totally different now. Yeah, and if you're tracking uh, Junkyard Dowd, John Dowd, number 16, he's running back in 17th at this point. A couple of points there. Got to be in the top 20 to get national points. Doubt is there. Let's look at Andrew Short, who went 1-1, swept the motos way back in 2005 in the 250 class. And he told me, I said, does that make you feel good coming to a track like this? And he said, nope, just makes me feel old. Because that <laughs> means I won a race here six years ago. And that's a long time in motocross terms. So that is uh, seventh place Short. And then uh, behind Short, you have Weimer, who was up front again with that lead pack off the start. but. Uh, we've seen this happen a couple of times. Uh, not able to quite stick with that pace. This is his first year on a 450. The guy's won a couple of these 250 races outdoors. Yeah, and Reed turned a 210, Dungey a 209. And then you go back to Short, who's just in front of Weimer, and he was turning a 212. And so the top seven are, are pretty close within a couple seconds. But then Weimer's last lap mm -hmm. was a 217. Okay, so he dropped quite a bit on that single lap, but 
looking at the lap times, he should be in somewhere between a 2.12 and a 2.14, uh, theoretically. But still, you're looking at uh, two, three, four seconds off, you know, off the leader. See that stat there for uh, the veteran here, 33-year-old Kevin Windham has uh, tied for 14th on the all-time list with 10 wins in this class. He's actually tied with Chad Reed. So Chad Reed's up front, might be able to break that. And how about Jimmy Albertson? As privateer as privateer gets is 11th, and he is all over the factory Honda of uh, Wyndham to try to get into the top 10. I, I don't, I don't know. I've seen a very privateer. We, sorry, Goose. We, <laughs> we seen a very privateer moment earlier today with Sean Hackley yeah, carrying, carrying his, his tire <laughs> to wheel. the tire uh, changing area. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Albertson maybe had someone to carry his tire for him, but he's still a privateer. And here's Michael Byrne, who is in 12th on the BTO Sports Butler Brothers Suzuki, Australian veteran. And, uh, you know, so many riders this year said, you know, I hope to be top five or top 10, but that's a problem. We probably got, what, 15 riders who expect to be in the top 10, Byrne being one of them. Yeah. Hard to fit 15 guys in 10 spots. Oh, Tommy Hahn is in the pits of the Moto Concepts Yamaha. And unfortunately, this has been an all too common sight for the number 12. He has had speed for sure. But uh, the results he, have been hard to come by. He looks really frustrated. Aaron, Let's send it down to Aaron. What do you got? Yeah. Tommy Hunt definitely frustrated. Tommy, you said that you're okay. What exactly happened out there? Yeah, I went down. I was in seventh. You know, off the start, got a good start. Was up there challenging and uh, just going down a straightaway. And my front end just washed out. I don't know what the hell happened. So go home, go back, get ready for next moto. All right. So we'll see the 12 back in the next moto as we watch. Uh, the next rider in the order is the 539 of Ricky Dietrich. He is in 13th. And then you got uh, Fred Knorr and the Swede in 14th. And Travis Sewell in uh, the number 15 spot. So there is uh, Dietrich on the uh, Valley Yamaha, who uh, started the year off real strong with the top five in Texas, has not been able to get back to that level since then. He wants more than 13th. Lots of things to see and do here at Millville, including some great racing to watch on the track. Chad Reed leading it. We're trying to... You're watching Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship live on Fuel TV from Millville, Minnesota. And you're watching our one to watch, John Dow, the 45-year-old veteran out of uh, Massachusetts. And uh, why is he here? Well, we had a chance to talk to John earlier today about why he picked Millville as a race to make yet another comeback to try to preserve his national number. John, why are you here anyway? Um, well, it's kind of a last minute uh, deal. You know, I just, it's, it's always been a great track for me. I, you know, uh, I, had, I had my first real legitimate win here um, back in 94. Uh, and uh, they got a real, it's, it's an awesome track. I've always loved it. And I, you know, I had the opportunity to come up with uh, some of my friends, my sponsors, Kenny G's performance tuning. And uh, I just, you know, I wanted to bring my son up and have him do some amateur day racing. And, uh, and, and really it's just, I'm kind of starting my, I'm joking around about it. I'm, start, I'm starting my training program for Southwick here, but uh, you know, I do plan on racing Southwick and, and possibly Unadilla. So, you know, I figured I might as well just get out here and get my feet wet and uh, see what happens. Yeah, John Dowd was always uh, such a favorite uh, when, you know, back in the main part of his career, and that's because he was just relentless. I mean, I raced against him so many times, and uh, it's great to see him back out here again. He's grooming his son here uh, in the sport, so they were here racing some of the amateur stuff, but uh, not quite the pace that he had back in the 90s, it looks like at this moment. Ah, he's uh, still inside the top 20. Hey, folks, watch the best Kung Fu cult classic films every Saturday only on Fuel TV. That's late night at 12 a.m. Eastern and Pacific. So just go to fuel.tv for the movie titles. It's Saturday night. You're going to be fired up from watching motocross, so surely you can stay up to midnight Eastern and watch some good Kung Fu tonight. Now the insomniacs can rejoice. They now have Kung Fu. <laughs> That's a normal life for me. <laughs> Maybe I am an insomniac. I didn't know. Now, as we found Dowd, we've also found Reed, who is uh, working his way into the top 20 as far as uh, lapping some of the riders. And Reed is rolling right now. Yeah, but you see that situation, the 430 there. Uh, Porter. Porter, yeah. Yep. As Reed was going up that hill, Reed had, he, right there, he wipes his eyes. He has no goggles on at this point. And so when he, when he was going up there, he was getting roosted and he had to lay out a little bit. So he actually can't run, uh, you know, as close you know, as fast through those lapters oh. as those lap riders as oh, he'd like oh, to. Oh. Did you see that bike? 
kick on him. And with Chad Reed, you rarely see that type of thing happen. This track must be brutal. Well, there is some squareage bumps in that, that section after the first turn there. You come down and you're shifting gears, probably fourth gear here on the, on the 450. And, uh, you know, like I said earlier, maybe his eyes are watering a little bit too, and it mm -hmm. makes it a little bit tough to see, and that stuff kind of sneaks up on you. So far, so good. Just a little less than four laps to go. Man, every time you count Chad Reed out, every time you think one of these young kids, you know, Dungey or Villapoto or Kennard maybe, is going to get the drop on him, he figures out a way to come back and respond. He's been doing it all season long, like you said a lot, in the second motos. But he's uh, looking like he wants to do it in the first moto today. And I know points, the points gap is not gigantic between either he and Villapoto or he and Dungey, but we're in the second half of the year. These guys are going to have to start making them up at some point. He's just not letting it happen. Yeah, this has been a great start here to the second half of the season uh, for Reed. A little bit surprised that Dungey fell off the pace a little bit. Now, he was about a second faster last time around, but he's still five and a half seconds behind and really hasn't been able to do to do anything with Reed's uh, lead here. Take us through this. Here's Reed getting sideways on the straightaway. Yeah. Now, now watch as you come down through here. It's, it's dried up a little bit, but he hits a little wet spot right here, and there's a square edge in there. A lot of soft sand on top, and a little bit of, of hard dirt there as that hillside has got carved out, and uh, he found one of those sharp edges. Well, he has carved out a lead, 5.2 seconds over Dungy, and he's got a good view of it. He doesn't have any goggles on, so he can enjoy this moment because he can see every aspect of this track. Be right back. Every rider is measured by victory. Fuel TV's coverage of the Lucas Oil Lane. Chad Reed continues to pull away here. Another tough lap for Ryan Dungey. Dropped to the 213 lap times. They were matching each other at 209s. So now Reed's lead is 10 seconds. We've seen this happen quite often. Dungey gets to Reed, can't figure out a way around, and then Reed begins to stretch it back out as he is putting Ricky Dietrich a lap down. That means Reed has lapped up into the top 14. He's on the gas. Yeah, he's absolutely flying right now. Just totally on a mission here. And what I, I started to uh, mention earlier was that I wanted to see how Reed would respond, respond after this break. He's had an incredibly busy six or eight months forming this new 2-2 Motorsports and the team. And he's just been, you know, the hammer down the whole time and really yeah. hasn't had a chance to take a break. So obviously, uh, the trip to the Caribbean has done him some good. He's fired up and uh, ready for this last half AMA Motocross Championship. And uh, a stat that we uncovered this week, uh, Reed now has 10 overall victories in this 450 class. He'd be working on possibly number 11 today if he can repeat this performance a little later in Moto2. The first time he ever won one of these 450 races was only 2009, so he's won 10 races over the last three seasons, really only two and a half. And in that time, Reed's only won three Supercross races. This was a guy that was known as a Supercross specialist. And there you go. Last three years, he's won 10 races outdoors and only three indoors. He has really flipped it and has become one of the toughest men, if not the toughest men, in the game outside. Look what he's doing here. Yeah, Chad's third all-time in Supercross wins, and he's trying to make his mark right now. Tied for uh, 14th all-time with 10 minutes. One lap to go for Chad Reed. Goggles or no goggles does not matter. He can put this thing on cruise control because he has a 14-second lead on Ryan Dungey. And Dungey had a nice little moto win streak coming in here, and that is about to be snapped. We'll see if the overall win streak goes down as well. Maybe he'll rebound in the second moto, which will be coming up uh, later tonight on speed. But meanwhile, Chad Reed on the 2-2 has had that red number plate on the bike ever since the end of the first round of the year. And it's been close at times and points. He was actually tied with Dungey at one moment. But ever since he has grabbed that points lead, he has not given it up. And Chad Reed, if there's one word I can describe this guy, it is stubborn. Anytime you think you've got him beat, he says, uh-uh, it's not going to be easy like that. And he figures out a way to respond. I'll tell you what, this track is stubborn. As you go through that, that whoop section out of that 180, that inside line, there's nowhere to go. It's just roller, roller, over the jump, roller, roller, roller. You just have to dip down in there. Now, Chad will be backing off the pace a little bit here. Dungey's 10 seconds behind, but uh, still see there's some pretty big bumps starting to form on, on the track. And next moto, this track is going to be really beat up and it's going to be challenging. 
No, we'll also get a little look at here. Freed holds on to win this moment. We talked to him on the podium and Aaron. Uh, he brought a little souvenir back from his vacation that he had in the Bahamas. You'll see the new hairdo that Chad has. And he even uh, got a little bit of a sunburn, he said, when he was out there on his tractor working his track in Florida over. You'll see what I mean in a moment when we talk to him on the podium. Hope he doesn't put a hat on. Yeah. We want to see the... Uh, he's he's for sure going to have a hat on. <laughs> well, you'll still see it inside. So he, he, he will have a smile on his face, though, I guarantee. He's got oh, yeah. about a quarter lap to go. Totally handled this moto. Rode the pace. Uh, ro rode, set the pace himself and forced Dungey to try to do something about it. To find a new line. And Dungey put out a lot of effort in there. It looked like Dungey had something for him, but now he's backed off the pace quite a bit. And uh, that's what gives Rude this comfortable 10-second lead. But this is going to be a nice win here coming off this break. Chad Reed wins here at Millville. And a pretty big gap in the end. Made a joke a couple of days ago that uh, Chad should put on the back of his pants. Hi, Ryan, because it seems like every time they go racing, he's got Ryan Dungey right behind him. And once again, he's able to pull away from the number one down the stretch, take a moto victory. Dungey. Solid ride for second. Villapoto did get around uh, Michael Lessie to take third. But I don't know if it's early, too early to count points or not. He will lose five more in the championship here to Reed by virtue of taking third with Reed taking the moto win. Not what Ryan Villapoto wanted. Yeah, and see the gap there, 30 seconds. When he when he takes a look at that, he knows that it was big. But uh, that's going to be a, a little bit frustrating for him. I'm sure Villapoto is going to come out in moto two with uh, some serious, serious energy there. All right, we'll be talking to these riders on the podium when we return. Uh, Chad's hair is all messy. It's hard to even tell it's any different. You'll see in a moment. Stay with us here live on Fuel TV. We'll talk to the winner. Fuel TV's live coverage of the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship continues here. We have one race complete at Millville and many, many more races yet to come. In a moment, we're going to be showing you highlights of this race we just completed. Chad Reed making another statement here, Jeff Emig, in front of this big crowd at uh, Millville. They, a lot of them came to see Ryan Dungey take a victory. But Chad's been pretty popular with the fans this year. I don't think they were too disappointed in this performance. Yeah, that was a pretty uh, smart, strong ride. And watch the start here. It's the number 22 right in the middle there. Grabs the whole shot with the local boy, Ryan Dungey, just to his left. Nick Way would find himself on the ground. And a whole bunch of others as well, about 10 feet further up the track, big pile up. So here's Dungey trying to go past Reed, and watch what happens. Almost loops out, hits the rear brake, then almost stuffs the front wheel. And that was right at the moment where Dungey was really putting the pressure on Reed. And that was it. Reed was able to pull away from there. You notice he doesn't have goggles on, because uh, he had to chuck him. He was taking on so much of sand kicking up from his tire. But it didn't matter. He's able to hold on and win the moto. Dungey finished second, Villapoto third. We'll show you the results here and tell you exactly how it broke down. Moto number one of the 450 class. Solid run for Michael Lessie on the KTM, finishes fourth. Trey Kennard, his first race outdoors this series, this season, and ever on a 450, finishes fifth. Brett Metcalf had a crash, recovered from sixth. Short Weimer, Simmons, and Albertson round out the top 10. Let's send it down to Aaron Bates. It was one year ago today that Chad Reed hung up his boots and his helmet and basically walked away from here, uncertain of what your racing career had in store for you. And here you are one year later, back up on the top of the box. Is this bittersweet for you, Chad? Yeah, I remember just riding right behind us here and uh, about halfway into the first moto and just, I had nothing to give and I just wasn't in a good place. So, uh, man, I, I've been thinking about that, to be honest with you. I, I want to turn it around and, and it's the second half of the season and I don't want to lay up. I want to I keep, the, keep the throttle wide open and try to achieve uh, race wins. Now, I didn't have any tear-offs on, so maybe my vision is wrong, but if you wouldn't mind taking off your hat, because I think during your vacation, this is what we're sporting, some cornrows. What, what prompted this? No, I went to the Bahamas, and, uh, man, since, since this, a year ago today, it's been a, uh, it's been a hell of a few months, and we, we started a race team, and my, the support of my wife and, and all my friends and family around me, just, uh, we've achieved a lot of goals, and it was time to reset the clock, go have a good time, enjoy the family, and, uh, and come out and, and try to do this, and we did it. So huge, uh, huge thanks to all the guys at 2G Motorsports, and uh, one more, try and do it again. Emmett would like to know if you could get the guy's name that did your hair. That was two girls, actually, so <laughs> I think Emmett will like that more. I think you might be right. Congratulations <laughs> on a great start to the day. <laughs> all right, how do you feel about that, Jeff? Yeah, it's, it looks good. Oh, looks right, good when it's yeah, on the yeah, top yeah, of the podium. It doesn't sorry. matter if you got a big fro wig on or what <laughs> it is. I'm not talking about the hair, I'm talking about the people that did it. All right, we'll be right back after this on Fuel TV.
Hillside's packed here at Spring Creek Motocross Park in Millville, Minnesota. They just got to watch a great first 450 moto. And we get a couple more of the front runners in that race down to the podium. Let's send it down to Aaron Bates. It was definitely a wild ride for Ryan Dungey. Ryan at one point almost off the bike after the whoops section. How intense is this track and how much has it changed since the beginning of the day? Uh, it's pretty intense, you know, with all that rain. Made the track kind of sloshy. It's drying out. It's really coming around good. I think second motos will be a little bit better, but uh, had a couple mistakes in the back. Can't be doing that. Allowed Chad to get away and uh, just couldn't recoup. But uh, we'll uh, recover and get ready for the next moto and uh, see, what, see what we can bring. Well, I mean, you could tell he's still in pretty good spirits right now, but uh, definitely needs to pick it up for that second, uh, second moto coming up. I'm all about the late night TV. Midnight Kung Fu, also the Daily Habit. That's big talk, big sports, big tunes. Daily Habit is the wildest late night party on television. Weeknights at 11 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, only right here they on do Fuel TV. They do so much crazy stuff on that show. Yeah, it's, it's a variety show. That's basically <laughs> anything, <laughs> That's, anything goes. Let's send it back down to the podium there in, in third place, Ryan Villapoto. Ryan Villapoto not overly happy with that third place finish. Ryan, what is it that you plan on doing in between motos so you can come back swinging for that second moto? Uh, maybe a little bit of a bike change. You know, I had a great jump out of the gate just out front of my gate. It seemed like it was a little bit soft and got bogged down a little bit, but uh, you know, we just come back strong. Um, not the motor that I wanted, but uh, you know, just can't thank everybody at Monster Energy, Kawasaki, Renthal, uh, Dunlop, um, Oakley, uh, Parts and Limited Thor, just everybody, uh, thank you guys. Uh, he looked happy, Jeff? Looked a little deflated. <laughs> so, you know, at this point, you're kind of like, oh, okay. But when you get back to the truck, that's the time where you have to rely upon the people around you mm -hmm. to bring your spirits back up, to turn it. Try to find some positives in it, make some changes to the bike, and come back out with a new attitude. We've got a lot more racing this year. He can bounce back, and we'll have the highlights from all the motos today from Spring Creek. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern on Fuel TV, we have our highlight show, so Spring Creek's coming up this Thursday. And then we've got all the live activity, all four motos, 250, 450, live from Washougal next Saturday, July 23rd, live at 4 p.m. Eastern on Fuel. We'll get that thing kicked off. Then, of course, Thursday night after that at 10 p.m., we'll have the highlights from that race. A couple of weekends off, and then we resume it all upstate New York at Unadilla Valley Sports Center, and we'll kick that show off live at 12.30 p.m. Eastern time, again, only on Fuel TV. The series is already in the books, and we look forward to more great racing in the second half. Let's give you the big picture storylines we're following today. It's the second half. Can anyone respond to the challenge that the top three riders in this series have put forth? We're looking at riders like Kevin Windham, Andrew Short, Tommy Hahn. Can they even get a podium finish, let alone a win, through these final six rounds of the year? Ryan Dungey is your hometown favorite today. He is from Minnesota. He has won this race the last three years in a row. He's gunning for a four-peat this afternoon. And we might have someone in there to break up that big three. It's Trey Kennard, last year's 250 class champion, who makes his debut on a big bike today, returning to action after a broken leg suffered in Supercross. So let's talk a little bit about racing here at Spring Creek, Jeff. This is a race that a lot of the riders circle on their calendar as one of their favorites. It is a brilliant racetrack to ride on. It is, and we had quite a bit of rain uh, leading into this event. Uh, rain stopped earlier today, qualifying practice was good. Now the sun is out, the humidity is up. These uh, second motos are gonna be really tough here today, but the track is shaped up brilliantly. The soil here is amazing. It, um, there's a lot of uphills and downhills, big jumps. Of course, the sand whoops that these riders are gonna have to battle. They're gonna have to dig deep. Like you said, this is the start of the second half. This is the championship push. And so I uh, can't wait to see how this turns out here today. All right, let's give you the 411 on how motocross works. The key is that we race not one, but two races, and then we total up the scores from both to determine an overall winner. And each race lasts 30 minutes plus two laps. We've already completed Moto 1. We'll show you Moto 2 in a moment. Now that's the format. Let's show you the track. We've got a GoPro onboard lap, and Jeff, we're headed to the most infamous section of this Spring Creek facility. Yeah, this is earlier today in qualifying practice as Nick Way, Valley Motorsports, Rockstar Yamaha, tries to navigate his way through, and there was so much moisture, you can see on the left side of the track there, Spring Creek over there, that these were really sloppy and really messy, and the bikes were twitchy, it was back and forth, not a real defined line through there. I do believe here in this second moto that that section's gonna speed up, it's gonna be a little more like usual, and those guys are gonna be flying through there. To take a look at the track map, brought to you by Kawasaki in the 2012 KX450F, fully equipped and race ready. Let's hit it, Jeff. Through the first turn, Nick Way, who was our GoPro, he was down in the first turn. Cut through the sand whoops, the line to the left on the first set, 
Line's going to be on your right through the second set. You've got to get on top and skim those. Look for some good lines through here. Down the hill, back up the hill, a massive double. A couple of downhills again, huge breaking bumps, tight rutted sections. you got to be clean through there with your technique. Up another hill, down through the Lucas Oil finish line. That's a lap at Millville. Now we mentioned our first motor was already complete, so let's show you the highlights of the first 30 minute and two lap race out here. Big crash, watch the right side of your screen. Nick Way on the blue Valley Motorsports Rockstar Yamaha ends up on the ground. A whole bunch of other riders were down just a few feet off to the left. Here's your battle out front, Chad Reed of the 22, and right behind him, Ryan Dungey. Chad Reed was out front leading, but watch on the outside here as Brett Metcalf tries to take a new line. It was still too wet and too soft as he plowed his Suzuki into that outside berm, lost some spots. Dungey ready to go for the lead and challenge Reed, but watch this. Gets the front wheel high, brings it back down, stuffs it in the sand, somehow keeps his Suzuki on two wheels as opposed to his teammate Metcalf. Meanwhile, Ryan Villapoto is struggling, trying to work his way through traffic. Here he's going to get Trey Kennard, who fell off the pace just a tad in his first race back. Trouble for the number 12, Tommy Hahn in the pits. He'll be back for the second moto. Chad Reed holds off the challenge from Dungey, wins the first moto here at Millville. And I'll set the scene for moto number two. Read your series points leader, extending it by just a bit. But as you can see, the boys chasing him for the championship finish right behind him. Here's your results. Reed on top, Dungey finishes second, Villapoto was able to make his way into third in front of Alessi and Kennard. Metcalf, Short, Weimer, Ty Simmons, and Jimmy Albertson round out the top ten. Let's send it down to the start, Aaron Bates. Thirteen motos in the books, and Chad Reed has won seven of those. Chad, what is your approach? You won that first moto here today. What is the approach as you head into the second round? Same approach as the first one, you know, try to get this whole shot and uh, take advantage of that and in uh, and a, and a tough racetrack that's that's tough to pass on. So uh, it's hot, it's humid, and I uh, feel like I'm at home in Florida. So, you know, I go try to have some fun and win another moto. Everybody's sweating, including myself. We've got Ryan Dungey, who made a couple of changes in between motos. But Ryan, that back tire, you guys were running the most aggressive sand tire that you could possibly uh, pass. It's almost like a paddle tire, but legal. What is it going to make a difference for the second moto? Yeah, that was just a little bit more aggressive. It was really muddy that time. It just felt really comfortable. But uh, and that making a going back to our regular tire track looks like it's drying out, looking good. And uh, get off to a good start and see what uh, I think the track's going to be pretty good this go around. Best of luck. These guys definitely have their challenges ahead of them. And Ryan Villapoto getting ready. Ryan, frustrated during that first moto. You went back and you requested some changes to be made on your bike. What exactly are you looking for out of the second moto? Ah, good start and uh, solid, uh, just a solid moto. Get up front and let's, let's race with these guys. Um, you know, I started back in the pack a little bit and I just had to work my way forward. And with the track being so one line, it was hard to pass and they got away. So I try to put myself in a better position this moto. All right, that's our progressive pre-race report, which means we are ready to go racing. We'll have 450 Moto2 in just a moment. On the last lap of the first 450 Moto from Redbud, Michigan privateer Josh Lichtel suffered a seizure on the track. He was quickly taken to a nearby hospital where he passed away 36 hours later. Josh was living out a childhood dream, racing with the world's best at a track he loved. Today, we remember Josh Lichtel. He was 23 years old. We're back, ready for moto number two here at Millville. Let's give you the keys to the race on one of the newcomers to the series. Jeff, that is Frederick Norin out of Sweden. What does he need to do? This, of course, brought to you by RockyMountainATVMC.com. Well, this is his first trip here to Millville, and he's going to learn that there's sand whoops. You need to get on top here this moto. Of course, they ride a lot of sand back where he's from, so it may be a place where his strengths show. He needs a race for the top 10. He was 14th in the first moto, was actually up a couple of positions higher than that, and uh, look for him to have a, a good, strong ride here in the second moto. All right, so that's one of 40 riders in this moto. Chad Reed took the first moto win. Ryan Dungey was right behind him. Dungey won the 250 class here, 2008, 2009, and won in this 450 class at this track last year. It's his home track, got a lot of people supporting him. Can Dungey make it happen in this second moto, Jeff? Uh, he certainly can, and he, he needs to use the crowd, mm -hmm. all the support that he has. I don't think we spoke to one member out there in the crowd of the fans that wasn't cheering for Ryan <laughs> exactly. Dungey here today. There was no reason to even ask. 
who people were pulling for today. It was Ryan Dungey across the board. And speaking of the board, it is sideways, which means it's time to focus down on the starting gate and go racing from Spring Creek. This time, Villapoto has the good start. He's out front on the number two with Reed, Weimer, and I believe Dungey right there. So once yep. again, all the favorites up front, Jeff. Trey Kennard right there inside the top five. I think he sneaked around to the inside, but this is exactly what number two, Ryan Villapoto, needed to do to gain some momentum and get some positive stuff out there. Now look, Jason, they've smoothed out the sand whoops to entry, but it's Chad Reed on the inside. Reed going after him. Let's see who beats who to this hard left-hand corner as the whole field tries to negotiate one of the toughest sections in all of motocross. And Reed held as it best. He's looking to make a move. Villapoto's going to fight back around the outside. But Chad Reed takes the number one spot. Boy, is Chad Reed rested and recovered after that vacation and a weekend off. He is fired up here in the number 22. Oh! oh! Reed launches! We got trouble! Chad Reed is down and down hard! Unbelievable for your series points leader! It has been a long time since we have seen Chad Reed have a crash of that magnitude and Filippono, Dungy, Kennard, they just saw it firsthand. That's got to shake them up as well to see someone of Reed's stature crash that big. So Villapoto wow. out front, that puts, uh, he's got a couple seconds already over Dungey, as you can see. And Trey Kennard, I spoke to him in between motos, just as I suspected, the race pace kind of caught him off guard a little bit, even though he was the fastest qualifier in practice. He's been practicing and training at home. The speed of the race and the intensity was too much. Are you kidding me? Chad Reed is back on the motorcycle? Wow. How can this be? That bike has got to be bent. How is he not hurt? He must have been 20, 30 feet up in the air, Jeff. See his team manager, Dave Osman there, they were taking a look at it. It looks like the silencer, looks like the bars, everything Listen was to the pretty crowd. clean. Listen to the crowd going crazy. Watch the replay, he hits a kicker, a square edge. You remember in the first moto, he did that also. And watch, he loses traction. And look at Chad, hits the downside, fortunately, that is unbelievable. That is that is your highlight of the year. Let's just go ahead and just... Absolutely. <laughs> I'm not sure. He is back racing, and he might have a shot. He's not that far back yet. He's not a lap down. He might have a shot to maybe even score some points in this moto if the bike can hold up. Well, that's exactly what he's going to need to do, is now it's time to charge. Okay, he's been so consistent. He hasn't been outside of the top three or the top five all season in yep. any moto yep. so now chad reed finally has this moto where he's really going to be challenged that's a scary one but it's time to put that out of your mind and get back after it i'm telling you that was i've been in that situation before jason where you're that high in the air looking down and uh whew. you see him working out the arm and shoulder we hope he's okay i mean it's certainly adrenaline is carrying him right now will reed go past the mechanics area will he stop for no he's not stopping he's going Unbelievable, watch this. Chad Reed back up and in this race. Friday. The Welcome back, Ryan Villapoto leads early in what has already been a dramatic second moto of your 450 class of the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Moto Cross Championship from Minnesota. Wednesday night, the car show with Adam Corolla is all new. ACDC's Brian Yo Johnson races a Lamborghini through New York City. The boys give driving lessons to some beautiful students. Don't miss the car show Wednesday night, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific, only on speed. Yes, they're going to teach some ladies how to drive a stick in a Dodge Viper. Yeah, but I'm concerned about the Lamborghini. Are we going to see that thing stuck in traffic, or are we yeah, going to actually yeah. see him flying through uh, the streets <laughs> of Manhattan? <laughs> Uh, unless it's four in the morning, I don't think there's any chance of flying through. Ryan Villapoto is flying through here at Millville, but uh, not without some serious drama already unfolding. Here's Ryan Dungey in second. Now, before he went to break, Chad Reed was late in this race and had a huge crash. He's back up and racing uh, in the 34th position. There's uh, Trey Kennard. I'm wondering, Jeff, for these three riders that saw that crash right in front of them, they don't know if Reed's up and okay. Are, are they a little bit freaked out over that? I mean, Chad Reed is well, the last guy you usually see have something like that happen. Yeah. When you watch the replay, focus on Villapoto, and he was looking back the whole time to see where Reed was right. as it was happening. 
uh, totally in amazement. Great racing here. You got 32 of Weimer, the 24 of Metcalf, and the 10 of Justin Brayton. And Brayton on the Muscle Milk Toyota Yamaha considers this the home race. He's from Fort Dodge, Iowa, and it's about three hours from here, so we saw a lot of Brayton shirts in the crowd. Yes, pretty much everyone's cheering for Ryan Dungey today, but there's a few Brayton folks out there as well. Yeah, and I, I spoke to Brayton um, in between motos too, uh, in between the motos also, and I said, wow, that first turn, you almost went down yeah. with Nick Way. He says, did you see me crash in the sand whoops? That's what you, oh. that's what you needed to see. So, first moto, um, he was a little bit off the pace and where he wanted to be, but uh, now back inside the top 10 here, putting in a solid ride. Now we got one of these classic motocross scenarios here. Jake Weimer and Brett Metcalf seem to find each other more often than not. It doesn't matter if it's a battle for fifth like it is right now. Sometimes it's a battle for eighth or ninth or sixth or seventh, but they always seem to hook up. I talked to Mehdi about that after our last race at Redbud. He said, yeah, and uh, he's run into Davey Millsaps a bunch of times this year, too. Millsaps skipping this race with a knee injury. But here we go again. Weimer versus Mehdi. This wow, time look at Metcalf running all over the place trying to find some different lines. Wow, look at the momentum here. And Metcalf able to get around Weimer and take over fifth. Now, also, you remember last week, Metcalf was riding the second moto with a uh, cooling vest on. And for a little more on that, let's go to Aaron Bates. That's right, you guys. Metcalf, for, he allowed me to borrow his ice vest, and I kind of want to wear it all day with how hot and humid it is. But this is what a lot of these guys wear. They ride it up. They wear it all the way up until the gate drops, basically. They give it to their mechanic to take back and put it back into their, the freezer. And this whole thing is water and ice. So it keeps their core temperature down, prepares them to go out, and especially helps for motor number two of the day. But we thank Metcalf for allowing me to borrow this. Well, I don't, I don't think she's going to take it off. <laughs> No, she we'll isn't going to use it the whole rest, rest of, the of the day. Well, the good news for Aaron, then, is that today Metcalf actually remembered to take the vest off. He did not intend to race with it in the second moto last week. He said about halfway to the moto, he didn't understand why he was sweating so badly. And then at the end of the race, he said, I cannot believe I forgot to take the vest off. So He forgot to so take it off. So it kept him cool in the beginning, and then it melted, and then it kept him... From well, the situation is it actually works two ways. You can put it in the microwave to heat it up. So once that thing gets hot, it's designed to keep the heat inside. So good luck with that, Aaron, in about 10 minutes. We'll see what happens. Tommy Hahn oh. here in the 12. He had a rough go of it in Moto 1. He is back here for Moto 2. He's an 8. Battling it out behind Brayton and Weimer. Yeah, there in, in uh, Moto number 1, Tommy went down pretty hard. He said he was just going down the straightaway. Front wheel twitched on him, threw him down pretty hard. He was really frustrated, but... He's had a couple of races like that this year where, where he's took some pretty hard falls, but I tell you, he just keeps rebounding. Yep. He keeps getting up. I am so impressed with his uh, determination. His speed this year has been exceptional, too. Just needs to limit those mistakes and those big falls because you just never know when that was going to take you out of the series. You know? Well, I made a mistake. I thought they were behind Brayton. In fact, uh, Hahn has gotten around Brayton, so they were in front of him. That's Weimer 6th, 12, Hahn 7th, Brayton 8th. Then you got Andrew Short and Kevin Windham rounding out the top 10. Been a tough summer for both these guys. I think Hom probably wanted more, and Weimer certainly as well in his debut on a 450 for the factory Kawasaki outfit. Yeah, and these guys, the last time around, Weimer was a 212 and Brayton was a 213. Dropping off the pace a little bit, especially considering Villapoto is out front. The top two, Villapoto and Dungy, are at a 203 and a 204. The fastest time previous was a 209. That's where uh, Kennard, Alessi, and Metcalf are running. So Villapoto and Dungey have stepped it up five seconds, six seconds a lap. Pretty and, impressive. And uh, Han is really hanging out to try to get around Metcalf here. You saw him hanging off the back of the bike a couple of sections, still not able to make it happen. They're putting a little bit of distance, though, on Brayton, so they, they are both pushing the envelope. That section down through there, I could just remember coming down through then the second moto and those kickers are starting to form and you just got to hold the throttle open and you're riding the rear brake a little bit trying to control the twitch in the rear end. Uh-oh, Han here on the outside. But it's gnarly because you're just wide open like fourth gear through there and then you hit that right-hander. It's a pretty intense section. We saw Villapoto have a couple of uh, intense moments, not only the one where he watched Reed go flying literally off the track, he saw a few little mistakes from Villapoto, but he has straightened it out now, pulled away. And watch Villapoto here on the progressive hole shot coming from the right side of the box. And look at this, he's got a wheel on Dungey. Alessi's there, a couple of Yamahas, Han and
Brayton on the outside. But fortunately, everyone makes it at least to the first turn without going down because of Moto 1. We had two guys down right. before the first turning. Little mistake there from Villapoto, feet off the pegs. On this type of track, Jeff, is it pretty much a guarantee that you're going to have some off the pegs moments? Uh, well, at the pace he's running, it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely on the gas right now. We're pulling away from Dungey early here in Moto number two. Villapoto looking for a big rebound. So here is Chad Reed. Scratching, clawing his way through. He is up to 24th place after one of the most spectacular crashes you'll ever see in a motocross race. I cannot believe he is, I'm not going to say uninjured, but at least feeling healthy enough to be racing through traffic. Jeff? Yeah, watch what happens. He gets his weight to the right just a little bit right here as he wheelies. Then he hits a square edge bump. He's 30 feet in the air. Has to be. So fortunate that he lands on the downside of that grassy hill. Now right here, look, he's trying to keep his feet under him so that he doesn't go head first. He did a great job of that. And those, those are really scary. And he's so fortunate that he didn't get hurt and that the bike was okay. And he's back up and going, trying to grab championship points. He's up to 24, 22nd it looks like now. Two positions away from actually scoring a point. And we're only halfway through this race. He could really move up, maybe up on the top ten. Now, Jeff, talk about that. You said you've been in that situation before. They called rolling up the windows. We're calling it out power windows. We were just cranking them. Uh, it doesn't always end as fortunate as it does for Chad. No, definitely not, and especially in the race situation. And like I said, with the bike and all that, he's definitely not riding as aggressive and at the pace that he is capable of. So. Um, not sure if he is injured under there or if he's like, like, okay, I just need to keep my cool right now and uh, try to get some points here, but not riding with a lot of, uh, you know, energy, like, you know, any desperation and urgency right now, but he's still picking up uh, points on guys. He's getting ready to go past Nick Way, Way's 21st. Albers, the 212 last time around was in 20th, and 20th is where you start scoring points. Now, uh, do you think Nick Way realizes what happened? Is, did, you know, in the first moto, Reed lapped up to around 13th place, I think. He doesn't think he's going to lap down, does he? It's no, a little early no, in the race. Yeah, we're 13 minutes plus two laps. So it's too early. These guys are racing Reed right now. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. unbelievable what Reed is able to do. He's about to get into the points right now if he can get by Way. And this could be the biggest pass of all. And it makes picking himself back up after that crash worth it. You got to get in the top 20 to score any points in these motos. Yeah, well, those guys made some passes last time around. Last time around, so to finish, Chad was second. This pass on Nick Way is going to give him 19th. Unbelievable. Two championship points, and I can tell you, two is better than zero. But I'm sure that Chad is going to uh -huh. try to grab more than that. And we're a little past halfway in this moto. Um, this is the type, the part of the moto where a guy like Chad really can't excel. Like I said, even though he's not really at the pace that he's capable of, last time around his lap time was a 2.14. He turned a 2.09 in the, in the first moto. And uh, track's a little bit quicker, or it has been quicker, so he's just trying to put in a good safe ride here and uh, grab some valuable championship points. So we'll see how far he can make his way up to here. Jeff, I can't imagine the feeling that he must have when he approaches that jump every lap again and you saw he get a little sideways you almost can't avoid it it's so rough and then also slippery at the same time i mean <laughs> i'd be afraid to jump that thing again well yes but you have to put that fear and the risk and all that stuff out of your mind and what you do is you say okay i'm not taking that line again okay. or now he's well aware of where that square edge bump is okay but uh definitely try to uh, correct that mistake also the second thing is that he he's so on point that he's riding so loose and so comfortable that when he hit something like that, he was not ready for it. We got a battle on our hands here. Kevin Wyndham on the 14 trying to close up on Justin Brayton. That is eighth and ninth. And then you see Weimer in seventh, not too far in front of them. So Brayton is the middle of this trio. Weimer just going out of view. Then there goes Brayton and now Wyndham. And uh, Wyndham admits that the sand tracks are not usually his favorite. He likes tracks with a bike stays in one spot underneath him. And as we saw there with Reed on this track, the bike's going to do some dancing around. Yeah, Wyndham was 11th in the first moto. Not not uh, 
sure quite what happened there, but he's, he's definitely capable of much better finishes. Sure. Right now, running ninth, about a 2.12 lap time. Our, our leader, Villapoto, has slowed down. He was a 2.08, but Dungey's still at a 2.05. So the race for the lead may tighten up a little bit here as we see Wyndham in ninth. All right, so uh, you got the yeah, Villapoto, Dungey, Kennard, 1, 2, 3, Alessi, Metcalf, then we find this battle. You got Han sixth, then Weimer, Brayton, Wyndham. The three we're watching right now. Yeah, and the Short thing is, him is sixth. Han is sixth, and there's back to short. There's really only about eight or ten seconds. So we've got a good group right here. Some fairly evenly matched riders that are pretty tight. Yeah, Every, six all through them ten. Turning yep. about a 213, 214 lap time. And here we will see the gap between Short and Wyndham. There he is. So yeah, they're all within basically the same camera shot. So one little mistake from any of them, and that can change in a hurry. Got to get credit, though, to Han. He's managed to go through a bunch of these riders to get up to that number six spot. And I'm telling you, Han has yep. been impressive this summer. I, You know, he's hit the mat. He's had some hard crashes, but he's always been able to get back up, uh, get himself healthy. Let's see if Andrew Short can make a run here from 10th, try to make his way toward the top five. Like we said, five riders in front of him are all pretty close. So if they make a mistake, he can take advantage. If he can rally in the last 10 minutes, he might be able to get them. Fans here at Bilbo help keep these riders motivated. It's tough today in the heat. At the top of our show, we mention our Rocky Mountain ATVMC.com keys to the race on the big speed, Frederick Norin. Who knew that he would actually become part of the championship equation today? Slowing down now, but uh, he was battling Chad Reed for a little while. What does he need to do? Keep going. Well, I mentioned the first two earlier, but be prepared for the heat. It looked like Maybe not. the heat up here in Minnesota with the humidity might have got to him, but who it has not gotten to is Ryan Dungey, who is now 1.3 seconds behind Villapoto, and let's see how he got there. Yeah, Dungey closing the gap. Villapoto makes it a mistake, Jeff. Watch this. He's trying to get around some lapped riders here. Gets way off the side of the track into a bunch of the soft stuff. And Dungey has closed it back up. 1.3 seconds, they're both turning a 2.08. All right, plenty of time left in this moto. First, check out the countdown clock at the top of the screen. Six minutes plus two laps. So Dungey has time to make a move. Now we have both motos that count here. Look at the event points as they run. You can find the two motos right now. Villapoto will edge Dungey by one point and win the overall for the day. So if Dungey makes the pass on Villapoto, he is your overall winner. Villapoto holds him off. He is your overall winner. So it's all about this last five minutes and two laps and who can pass who. Yeah, and we don't use the simple scoring where a first is a one point, a second is a two point. Yep. Our point system goes 25 and a three point gap back to 22 and then 20 for third. So you get that extra little bonus point for winning the moto and Dungey needs it. And listen to the crowd come to life as Minnesota's favorite has closed right up to Villapoto. He's going to try to make a move around the outside. He's going to jump back down. Dungey has needed to do something really special. He's been so good and so consistent, but hasn't had the, that, that on-fire ride. And this is the place where you come for the rider. You Look need, at this. Woo! You, you know, you've got to win at your home track. Well, we talked about it, Jeff, leading into this race. Would the home track advantage give him that little extra burst? You thought it might? It sure looks like it has. But he still has not been able to make the pass. Villapoto is very tough to get around. Uh, Villapoto is spectacular at this racetrack, this time of motos. He, he knows how to get it done. Three-time 250 motocross champion. Had one of the most impressive second motos that I've ever seen a rider have ever in 2007 when he was battling Dungey's got an impressive second moto going here as well. He's going to drag race down the inside. Can Villapoto beat him to the spot? He does. Another lap in the books, but it is as close as it could possibly be between the two and the one. Four minutes plus two laps to go. Dungey trying to use a little local knowledge here, switching up the lines, giving Villapoto all that he can handle. But you notice Villapoto in his body language. He's not broken down. He's not, uh, you know, there is no sense of urgency. He's ri still riding his pace and his race. Very comfortable out front. Dungey going to try the outside. Gets a little sideways. Can he make the move? Taking the wide line. But what can he do with all that momentum? Dungey all over the place. Left, right. And not able to make it happen. 
And oh. Dungey has said several times this year, he's got to figure out new lines. He's been stuck behind guys like Reed and Villapoto in a lot of these races. He's definitely trying different lines. Oh, he's putting out so much effort right now. Here's Dungey around the outside. Oh. Woo! Over the same jump where they both saw Chad Reed almost end his season. They both step up, clear it, negotiate it together, and head back downhill. Let's see, Dungey tiptoeing around here. He was really quick. Watch how he cuts to the right over this little single. Not quite as close as last lap around, but now he's going to try a tighter line. This is great racing right now. The premier class, two of the sports best Dungey going coming at down it. that hill so hard, Jeff. Watch this here. He squares him up around the outside, maybe. And once again, Filippoto beats him to it. It seems like Filippoto, Jeff, knows the section that Dungey's trying to beat him to. Yeah, but look, Dungey is all over the place trying wide lines and you would think that he's going to lose a little time, but no, he stays right there on the back wheel. He is really quick right now. He has got the speed on Villapoto, but he just needs to find a passing point. We have never really seen Ryan Dungey rough anyone up, you know, use the motorcycle or his body to push somebody out of the way. We're in the second half of this championship fight. Dungey needs to make up ground. Is it time for him to get aggressive? Yeah, well, uh, he is getting aggressive. There's no doubt about it. Oh, takes a face full of sand. We drag race through one of the roughest sections of this track again. You mentioned all those big holes through here. Look at Dungey. He just seems to have a little more momentum in spots. Oh, this could be it. And once again, Filippoto beats him to the spot. Great move by the number two. Let's see what sort of run Dungey can get here through these sand whoops. He's been riding this track and these sand whoops since he was a young boy. Knows to go to the outside right here. Let's, yeah, he's going to funnel right back in. Outside didn't work for him last lap around. Yeah, you're right, Jeff. He's been able to pull right back up on Villapoto. But now time might be on Villapoto's side. He has staved off this attack. Dungey got to him about five minutes ago. Here he goes to the inside. And Dungey takes Villapoto down. The crowd goes crazy. And on the other hand, we were wondering if Dungey would attack like that. Unbelievable. This could shake it up. Trey Kennard is in third. He's 50 seconds back. filippoto has got to get the fight started. He does. Now the question is, Jeff, was that racing or was that the first ever time we've seen Ryan Dungey hey, stop that was a plastic? That was a really aggressive move, and Dungey was so close so many times. He's seen an opening and went for it. I don't think that they touch. We'll take a look at the replay, and uh, wow. All right, we'll give you a replay and we return. We've never seen Ryan Dungey attack like this, side by side. Filippoto goes down. We'll reset it when we return to Millville. Thursday, hitch a ride on an all new American trucker as Rob gets up close and personal with the most famous and iconic American big rig. It's a Freightliner adventure on an all new American trucker Thursday at 10 Eastern, only on speed. Well, Ryan Dungey, we've never seen this type of aggression from him. Jeff, take us through it. Watch. He sees the opening, carries his momentum around, and Villapoto doesn't get through clean. Now, Villapoto tries to pull up out of the way, and watch Villapoto trying to stay away from Dungey's rear tire and just stuffs the front wheel of his Kawasaki in here. Watch this one more time. Gets a little wide and then hits that soft dirt right there on the side of that hill. What makes the bike come to a complete stop? Did he just grab a uh, front brake to try to avoid running stuffed in? Stuffed it in there, knifed the front tire as he was trying to miss Dungey's uh, uh, rear tire, but it was totally aggressive, no doubt about it. And uh, that move is going to give Dungey the overall if he can keep it on two wheels to the finish. What a run here for Trey Kennard in third. First race of the year outdoors coming off of a broken femur. That is a thigh. That's the biggest bone in the human body. Back now and in third. Solid run in Moto1. Going to back it up here in Moto2. Should be good enough for an overall podium. Amazing run. And by the way, it's his first ever race on the 450cc bike outdoors. Yeah, but it's not his first femur break. No. Did his couple of years Twice. ago on the 250, yeah. So, uh, what a, I don't know how these guys do it. It's the same thing where we saw Reed have that big crash earlier. He's able to, you know, focus past that. You break a femur, Jeff, you know plenty of riders who have had that. It's a tough injury to bounce back from mentally. 
It's almost like it never happened to this guy. That's exactly it. When you get injured, you, the best guys have the ability to just, you know, blank that out. Like it, like it doesn't exist. Right. And just move forward. And it's with little injuries. It'll be for Chad Reed here. It'll be, you know, he's got some visual memories of flying through the air like that. Right. Um, but he should have the ability to just put that behind him and act like it never happened and, and keep racing. It's unbelievable. He's up to 15th place. So he has passed 25 riders after the crash. And you know that that bike is twisted up. He's got to be hurting. So many stories to cover here. Kennard, Reed, uh, Villapoto going down. And this man, Ryan Dungey, spurred on by his home state fans. A lot of people saying it was a must-win situation for Dungey. This was his track. This was his opportunity. He took advantage. But guess what's coming up on the calendar seven days from now? Ryan Villapoto's home track at Washougal in his native Washington State. So maybe a chance for a little payback. Although we don't think Dungey did that on purpose. In fact, after the crash, we saw Dungey look over his shoulder. I think he was surprised that Villapoto had gone down. He was almost yeah. wondering where the Kawasaki was. Well, the point situation for Dungey came in here with 246 and Reed 268, so 22-point gap. Lost three points to first moto to Reed. But at this point... He's going to gain 19 the way yeah, it is right now. Reed's, Reed's setting in, in uh, 14th right now. That gives him uh, seven points. First is 25. Oh, Reed's moved up one more. And uh, every point counts. Reed's about seven seconds behind the next rider in the order, Michael Byrne. I don't know if he's going to have time to get him. But basically, you're looking at, at the end of the day, Filippoto, Dungey, Reed, almost a dead heat, all three, at the top of the point standings. When this race is over, we didn't think this championship could get any closer or any more exciting. Yeah, certainly not the way that Chad Reed rode Moto1. Grabbed the whole shot, dictated the pace, and D Dungey could not do anything with it. Looked like he was pretty frustrated, but positive here on the grid walk for Moto2. And once again, this makes four years in a row that Dungey has won at his home four track. Feet. A lot of people wonder, would Ryan Dungey find that extra spark, that extra aggression at his home track? And he did. He's going to win it in front of the home fans at Millville. And an exciting way to do it, too, running down Ryan Villapoto and making an aggressive pass to get the win. And he's making up a whole bunch of points in the series as well. When it's time to get... Flies through the air while leading the race. And gets up and finishes 14. We thought it was all over. Maybe the season, maybe everything. Good 30 feet there. And here he is about a minute later. Did not even go a lap down. Got back in the race past 26 riders. Meanwhile, Ryan Dungey runs down Ryan Villapoto late and executes this pass, not only to take the lead, but it caused Villapoto to go down. Don't think that was Dungey's intention, but it was enough to prevent Villapoto from fighting back, Jeff. Yeah, watch Villapoto stays wide and he stuffs it in some soft dirt and goes down. And that would give up the overall. So Ryan Dungey wins Moto2. He had a second in Moto1. Reed won that one, but was not a factor to win this one. Meanwhile, we've got Aaron Bates, who has caught up to a very sore and very lucky Chad Reed. Aaron? Very lucky indeed. Chad, a spectacular crash. You had a long time to roll up the windows out there. What went on from your perspective? I didn't even know. I, just, I, was, I was actually excited that I made a pass on, on Ryan. I was aggressive right away. and Next minute I know, the, rip, the handlebars just got ripped out of my hands, and I was winding up the windows. That was, that was the scariest crash I've ever had. And, uh, man, I hit my head pretty hard. And, Felt like I was going to throw up at any time in the moto, so just any points helps. I didn't even know where I finished, and uh, tough day, but uh, you know, championships are, are won on your bad days. A true warrior today, Chad Reed. <clears throat> Unbelievable. Every point's going to count now when we show you the standings later on, and you'll see why it is so close between these two, where these three now that Dungey has actually rebounded. Incredible. Lots of drama today at Millville. We'll talk to our podium finishers when we return and try to sort this all out. This summer. The well, so much to discuss here at Millville. Let's talk to someone who has a first-hand perspective. Let's go down to Aaron, who has our winner, Ryan Dungey. 
Well, some people might consider it home track advantage. Ryan, you've had so many laps on this, but so deserving today. Take us through that ride and also take us through the pass that you made on Ryan Villapoto. Uh, well, I got off to a pretty good start, right? I think I was third. I was able to move my way into second, and Villapoto started to open up a little bit of a gap, but uh, you know, I knew it was a hot day. I knew it was going to be a, a, a tough one at a uh, lengthy race, and uh, it ended up being that, you know, he maybe got caught up in some areas, but uh, was able to make the pass coming out of that sand wash area, the last corner, and uh, it feels good, man. It feels good to win in front of the hometown crowd, but uh, really uh, special to have everybody here. You know, they, they root. It takes a lot of people to make this happen, and uh, I'm so glad we can all celebrate it together. Four years in a row you've pulled this off here, two in the 250 class, now two in the 450 class. You've got over 45 family and friends here, but this entire place was chanting on their feet for you. Did that give you the extra energy that you needed to pull this off today? Oh, for sure. You know, to have that behind me is an added bonus and, um, you know, the, the, my whole family really, but uh, absolutely. You know, to, to be able to grow up here with my family and uh, I've seen all the hard times. I know what it's like and um, I'll never forget it. And uh, it's all that much better when we can celebrate and be up here and I uh, just want to say thanks to them. Thanks to the man above, he makes it all happen, you know, and uh, my mom and dad, everybody, and family, brothers, uh, Lindsay, and uh, the whole crew, Team Rock, Team Rockstar, Mikita Suzuki, and Dunlop, Showa, all you guys, thank you. All right, he has won four straight at this track, but none of them were as dramatic as this one. Filippoto picks himself up, holds off Kennard to finish second. A solid day for Michael Lessie, finishes fourth, Brett Metcalf fifth. Weimer, Brayton, Hahn, Short, Wyndham. We mentioned that was a great battle back there outside the top five, and that's the way it broke down. Wow. Just unbelievable if the second half of the year is going to be like this week to week. It's going to be crazy headed down to the finale at Pala. Let's send it back down to Aaron. A tough day for Ryan Villapoto. Ryan, just when you were making the pass happen, something went drastically wrong. Take us through what happened from your perspective, because Ryan said that you guys actually didn't touch. Yeah, no, no, it was, uh, I, I mean, from the start, I had a great start. Uh, Dunlop tires just hooked up really good off the line. Um, you know, rode awesome, I think, the, the first half of the moto, and then I got caught up with some lappers, and, man, you know, it's hot, track's rough, so um, wore on me a little bit, but uh, he got beside me in the whoops, and <clears throat> we came out of the turn, I got on it, and then I was on it just a little, little too long because he had a little more momentum when we came in the turn, and we just didn't, we didn't hit, but... I couldn't turn down because he was there, and then uh, my front wheel was in the in the powder, so um, couldn't save it. All right, we'll show you the overall results. That pass did change everything. Uh, Villapoto would have won the overall if he had not been passed. Dungey gets him, and Chad Reed there salvages fifth overall with that 14th, and will also uh, salvage some valuable points. And how about Trey Kennard? First race back, he's on the podium. Pretty, pretty impressive. I'll tell you what's impressive is Dungey's got four in a row, two on the 250, two in the 450. The greatest of all time, Carmichael. <laughs> Eight in a row in the 450 <laughs> class, two on in the 250 class, but uh, there was one year that he didn't win, so Dungey on his hey. way, though. Four in a row, <laughs> trying to match the greatest of all time. Apply Carmichael standards, that's tough. Let's send it back down to Aaron Bates on the podium. Aaron? Trey Kennard making his debut in the 450. And not only did you make your debut, but you show up here and you make it on the podium. What does this moment mean to you, Trey? I'm super happy. You know, it was a it was a great race for me. You know, it's it's kind of a bummer those guys. You know, they beat me pretty good, but uh, you know, I can't can't be too bummed on myself. I've only been on the bike so long, and uh, man, I just got to give it up to Lord Jesus Christ. You know, that's uh, that's the reason I'm here. And uh, whole Honda, Geico, and uh, Rinthal. Uh, Alpine Stars, Fly, Liette Brace, Scott Goggles, DC, Fit and Motors, everyone, thank you so much. Okay, great start to your 450 outdoor career. Well, folks, now that you know how dramatic this champion cha championship chase is going to be, you do not want to miss any of the upcoming rounds in our Toyota Moving Forward schedule. We'll be at Washougal next weekend with live coverage on speed. We'll take a few weeks off. We'll go to Unadilla. And then we'll uh, roll through the rest of the Northeast. We'll be in Massachusetts, Pennsylvania. Look at how close it is now. Reed barely escapes with the points lead. Villapoto and Dungey are right there. This is going to be wild through the final five rounds of this championship. We've never seen a 450 class title fight shape up like this. These fans at Millville are never going to forget this day. Not only did their home track favorite win, but he did it in dramatic fashion. Chad Reed survived a wild crash to come back and race another day. You can't ask for more excitement than that. For Aaron Bates and Jeff Emig, I'm Jason Wygant. Thanks for watching.